Hello and welcome and thanks for watching again. My name is John Flynn from Flynn Real Estate serving Southern Ontario here to give you my honest and professional opinion about the Canadian housing market. This week I'm going to talk about the mortgage rates briefly, a quick look at local and national home sales, and revisit the debate on the supply and demand because I get a lot of comments about that, that uh, still the supply issue is what's going to keep prices elevated. So anyway, here are the mortgage rates. All the big banks are now over 5% for a five-year fixed. And I guess uh, these are insured rates for insured mortgages. If you're not insured, I heard it's even higher from one of my mortgage broker contacts. So anyway, all over 5%, we've reached uh, a new paradigm, I guess. So that's obviously gonna keep affecting house prices. And I heard they're gonna keep going up. So we'll keep an eye on that like I always do. So the big one this week is my local market, as you saw in the thumbnail. House prices have dropped 100,000 or $98,600 to be precise from May until June. And I took these numbers on June 21st. So, you know, it's two thirds of a month, a little bit more. And I looked at them last week, they were actually worse uh, mid, uh, when we were about mid month, the 15th of June. This is, and this is a, a, a population of half a million people so $98,600 month over month. Now, remember, if you can remember back to, you might not have seen it because I've got a lot of subscribers since then, but in December to January, there was a $100,000 increase in one month. And I put that video out in February. You could look back through the thumbnails and see it. This, now we just went the opposite way. And you can see on this graph here, from December to January, it took a big jump and it's back down, right? Uh, and this is after we've lost, you know, three to 5% month over month after that. So it looks like we're back to anywhere from September to October prices right now. Also 11.7% in one month, it's gone down. I will update this at the end of the month to, you know, quantify the, the whole month as a whole, but uh, big, big move. And um, for anyone that says, you know, we're going to go down 15% or whatever. Like we went 11.7 in my region in one month. Now that wasn't the rest of Ontario, but we did fare really well with our declines. Well, well for the sellers, I guess, um, for the previous months where other locations in Ontario did drop 10% in one month. We only lost like three, four or 5%, whatever the month may be. So we just played catch up, but it all came at one month, uh, one month's time. And here is, the rest of Ontario, excluding GTA, as you know, I, I don't include GTA in my data set. Uh, that's a separate one, but I will do all the major places again in at the end of June or the beginning of July. I'm just this is just a, a quick snapshot of average sale prices. So the rest of Ontario, excluding GTA, we're down forty six thousand month over month from May, uh, and this was done yesterday. This one I didn't do this one today. I did this one yesterday. So to the 20th of June or 5.3% so far for June and 16.3 from the February high. So again, places calling for 15%, I think it was Desjardins, 15% decline by the end of 2023. Well, we have 16.3 already um, again in Ontario. So yeah, just uh, we're gonna keep an eye on these numbers and, and see how far they go. But it uh, looks like we're, we're trending down quickly. So I wanted to go back to last week when, because I didn't touch on it in my last week's video, it came out after I made the video, but the CREA, Canadian Real Estate Association, released their May figures. And um, of course, here's the, the, the highlights and the article, Canadian home sales slow again in May. So they, you know, obviously they're on track with the, the narrative that it is a slowing market. And they go into various statistics. But the one thing I wanted to point out was the HPI or the HPI index, the month over month, and it's, it says it edged down 0.8. Now that's not an average. So when they release this, it's it's a lagging indicator and, and it has its uses, but I don't believe the best use is reporting month over month sales, especially when we are trending. If you wanna know a general thing and, and, and the market doesn't affect you, fine, HPI is good. But if, when you're thinking about selling and you're thinking, should I wait a month or two? I don't think the HPI is the best statistic or indicator to look at. So I wanted to compare that with, with average sale price. So again, 0.8% month over month for the HPI. And here's a graph that shows, right? 
the blue is the HPI and it's, you know, it edges down as they say, but look at the average sale price. The average sale price is shot down. So there's a big difference. And that's, I, I wanna look at the numbers, right? Let's, let's check them out. So this is something that's not included in their like press release or their web release on that page. You have to look further into their site and, and to find this, but you can see the national, this is the national average sale price and it's down to 711, 711,000 in May, 2022. And that was a 4.69% month over month. So the HPI went down 0.8%, but this has gone down 4.69. So big difference, right? And 12.9% from the February highs. So our market has declined almost 13% from the February highs, but they don't issue that in their statement, which, and I don't know why they do it. I'm not going to badmouth them, say they did it for a reason or not, but I, I believe that they should include it because it's an important statistic, especially if you're looking to get into the market or get out of the market, right? You want to know this. You want to know current data. But anyway, that's, uh, I just wanted to touch on that um, just so I can, you know, put that in perspective. The one last thing I wanted to touch on with Korea was they actually have a moving average graph of course in stocks and whatnot uh, people love using you know 50 day and 200 day moving average it's it's harder to do daily moving averages with with real estate but they have a 10 uh, 10 year monthly moving average and if you look at and you can see like it's the data and the sales these are these are home sales they always hover around the moving average and of course we shot way down at the beginning of the pandemic and then we shot way up and we've just come down and crossed underneath the 10 year moving average. So important indicator and we should watch this. Obviously we're gonna keep trending down, I believe, for home sales and uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, but uh, pretty interesting statistic. So yeah, I put the <laughs> I put the debate out there like last video, like let me know what your arguments are that the market's not gonna go down, like it's gonna, it's gonna go up because I couldn't find any. And the big one was the supply issue, right? There's so many immigrants coming or whatever the case may be. And, and you make great points. Like there's lots of people coming, 400,000 immigrants a year, even though we don't have population growth other than immigration, but so 400,000 a year. So I did it in a previous video, but it was again way back. So I wanted to revisit it and update the numbers. So let's get into the argument. And my argument is there's lots of supply. They built more than enough homes to accommodate all the new immigrants or the, the increased population in Canada. So let's check it out and see what we got. So first off, this is an interesting um, chart here. Number of households and average number of people per household Canada from 1851 to 2011. So of course we have to take that into consideration. We're at about 2.4 right now, 2.5, but it's 2.4 as per Statistics Canada. And you can see, uh, the red line, we used to have lots of people per household back in 1851, and that's obviously declined, but it's le it's leveled out pretty good. Like it's slowly declining, but it's it's not going to be like at two people in, you know, five years from now, it'll still be 2.3 people probably. And then the average number of homes. So we've been building lots of homes too. It's not like we, we've lost inventory, right? So we've consistently built homes and we've consistently have had less people per home and our population's increased obviously also. But again, interesting chart, but it uh, doesn't really prove anything right now. So here's a chart and this is from Statistics Canada, the data. I, I grabbed the data and then charted it myself. Last 10 years from 2012 to 2021, these are all Q4 uh, updated stats and same with the, the other numbers I'm gonna show you, it's all, it's all uh, Q4. So we've gone from a population of 34,800,000 to 38,400,000, 3.6 million or whatever. I have the numbers, uh, the accurate numbers in a second. Next, again, this is from StatsCan. This is from their 2016 census, and we had 2.4 people per household. So I'm pretty confident that these are accurate numbers. And of course, the number of housing, they use starts and they use completions. I'm using completions because it doesn't matter how many homes are started, if they didn't complete them, it's not adding to supply. These are actually housing completions. This is total units I'm using here at the top row of 47,000. And these are by quarter from, again, from Q4 2012 to Q4 2021. The total number of housing completions is one point, just under 1.8 million, 1,796,000 new units completed throughout Canada um, as per Statistics Canada. 
So now let's quantify these numbers. We have an increase of 3,600,439 people in 10 years. We had just under 1.8 million, 1,796, 816 residential units completed in that 10 year cycle. We needed 1.5 million units to serve 2.4 people per unit, the, the increased population. And we built enough for 4.3 million people at 2.4 people per unit. So you can see we've had more than enough uh, new homes to accommodate the increased population. The problem is these people didn't buy the homes, investors and, and whoever else bought them. It looks as though we do have a supply shortage. And I guess it, it comes down to, is there too many people, not enough homes, or too many purchasers, not enough homes? And it's the latter. It's too many purchasers, not enough, enough homes. The supply will increase now that interest rates are less desirable, highly, they're highly less desirable and the investors are not making the returns they're used to or want to. So I believe we're gonna be headed for an oversupply of properties and we're trending in that way, looking at the supply numbers, even from StatsCan or from, sorry, from Korea, that if you look on their latest release, you know, supply's up 4.5%, I think, month over month. And also, supply has increased further than that when you're talking about residential units. There are so many people, and again, I said this in the previous video when I touched on the subject, that have made in-law apartments or accessory apartments, usually most of them are like illegal or <laughs> non-conforming uh, to the bylaws, but there is so many basement and, and in-law apartments now. So we've actually increased more than that one point, just under 1.8 million units in the 10 years. We've probably like increased 3 million units total just because of all the accessory apartments and whatnot. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, I just wanted to address it because I get the argument all the time. Lots of, you know, immigrants and Chinese people and whatever else coming here and uh, 400,000 a year. Well, I don't believe that's the reason for the supply demand. I think it's the problem is the demand, not the supply and the demand's changing, obviously. Last thing I wanted to talk about was I get, uh, I, I thank you for the comments, all comments, uh, good or bad. Most of them are, are good and, and appreciate what I do. I'm just, I'm trying to be honest uh, with what I think. I think the obviously house prices were overpriced and the correction is coming and is here. And some people don't like hearing that. Some people do. Um, some people, you know, give me thanks for being honest and because they say there's a lot of dishonest realtors or many of them or most of them are dishonest. Or, and I don't think that they're dishonest. A lot of the realtors, some of them are, like just like everybody in whatever profession you're in. Maybe they just don't know, they're ignorant to the facts or they're listening to their brokerage. Um, again, they're, they're out to sell homes, not to anti-sell homes, right? So, so I just wanted to read something that I get from one of the top local realtors around here. I'm not gonna say their name. I'm not gonna show you the article. Uh, you, can, you can listen to what he wrote um, or whoever his team wrote, but this is the opposite of what I say, and this is what people are talking about, and I highly and severely disagree with what he's saying. Let me know again your thoughts, but let me just read what he says, and he's, uh, it's funny because he's talking about the misconceptions, and I'm, I'm the person that's giving the misconceptions in his opinion, right? Not me specifically, but people that talk like me. He says in his, and this is like a monthly newsletter he, he mails out in the mass mailing, clarifying the real estate misconceptions. There has been negative press flooding the media regarding the housing market. Even though we have been hearing about a lot of price corrections taking place, we are still up double digits year over year in average sale price. The downward shift we are experiencing is almost at its end in my opinion, yet the numbers are still holding strong. The average sale price in May 2022 is up roughly 12% in comparison to the average sale price of all 2021. The Niagara region was up 16% in May versus the average sale price of all 2021 due to its affordability, affordability and desirable location. Regardless of the spike we saw in January and February of this year, the average sales price year over year is holding strong. So the downward shift we're experiencing is almost at its end. So according to this realtor, there's a lot of misconceptions uh, from the media. And did he say anybody else? Yeah, he said the media. And 
in his opinion, we're almost at the bottom of this rut or of this downward uh, cycle of prices. And now they're going to hold strong the prices. Yeah. <laughs> so I, obviously I disagree with this. Let me know in the comments what you think. He also included a chart on here, a charting table that shows, you know, all the sales are way down. 30, 40 percent sales are down in every area in this region. But he uses the year over year price. Now, yes, we're up year over year. Of course we are. But what's the trend right now? The trend is not up. The trend is going down. It's going down monthly. It's accelerating in certain areas. And I don't believe we're anywhere near the bottom. The interest rates haven't even kicked in. I still have people wanting to buy like my listings that want to get the deal done before a certain date because their interest rate hold is good until you know a certain date. So they want to make sure they buy. Again, they haven't even they haven't even taken effect yet these higher interest rates, and we're at the bottom. This guy says so. Again, highly disagree with this guy. Let me know what you think. And again, thanks for watching. And for those of you that comment, I do read all the comments. I try to respond to them all. Sometimes I get a little confused with the crypto uh, spam I get in the comments. But uh, again, I do filter through them pretty good. Thanks for watching. And until next week, have a good day.